So honored to be here. Go to Ephesians chapter number one. I want to encourage those of you that were not in the first service to make sure you go back and listen to it because I'm going to be catching up, meaning I'm preaching a two-part sermon and I'm only going to start right off the end of it so I can get to the finish of Ephesians chapter number one, verse number 11. And we're going to put that up in the Amplified Bible this time instead of reading it out of the King James for the sake of time because I'm just going to overdose you for this sermon, for this sermon. In Him, now everybody say in Him. That means in Christ or by virtue of me being in Christ. In Him, we were also made God's heritage, his portion. We obtained an inheritance, for we had been foreordained, chosen, and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and the design of his own will. So that we who first, I'm going to go on down to verse number 14. So that we who first hoped in Christ, who first put our confidence in him, have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in and adhered to and relied on him, were stamped with the seal of the long promised spirit. Everybody say that after me, the long promised spirit. That spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. The first fruits, the pledge, the foretaste, the down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of his glory. I've been preaching about the down payment. Everybody say that after me, the down payment. One more time, the down payment. And the down payment comes from this verse that the Spirit of God begin to deal with me about an assignment of moving the church, the believers. These, this is you and me after we have received Christ. Moving us from deliverance into inheritance. Not just coming out of sin, but into the kingdom to receive an inheritance. You and I have an inheritance. It was destined by God, designed by God, and the Bible says he did this after the purpose and counsel of his own will. So he chose this inheritance for us. Now the Bible is very clear. If you go to Hebrews chapter number one, um, I want to just... Grab this. Actually, I, sh I didn't even think to give you this scripture because I wasn't going to turn there until here. But Hebrews chapter number one, verse number, number, let's look at verse number three. Hebrews chapter number one, verse number three, it says, Jesus, who being in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his purpose, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than angels and hath obtained a more excellent name than they. So it's talking about what happened to Jesus after he sat down at the right hand. Now he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, which means his works were completed and his works were fulfilled. Now I'm going to say something that I want you to grasp it because this is crucial for where you're going. Redemption, salvation, 
are all terms that belong to Jesus and Jesus only. A lot of times we walk around as if we have the promises of God. But in all actuality, the Bible tells us God hasn't promised you and me anything. He made all of the promises between him and Christ. You and I get in on it by being with Christ. Which means apart from Christ, God hasn't promised you anything. But in Christ, you got everything. Yeah, I, I just, I can't, I just, I can't help, I got to say it right. I get everything, I get everything. So the promises are between God and Christ, not you and God. You get in on it because you're in Christ. Now this is good news. I'm glad he did it that way because if it was between me and God, I could revoke it. I could mess it up. It would be conditional. But since it's in Christ, it is already settled. Therefore, I don't have an inheritance. Jesus has the inheritance. But I became a joint heir with Jesus. So that means if Jesus has got it, now I got it by being in Jesus. This is the privilege and the beauty that God wanted to bring to the sons and daughters. That he would bring us into an irrevocable, irreversible, undeniable inheritance that is sealed between God and Christ. That there are promises between God and Christ. So the redemption before it happened to you, it happened to Christ. And out of Christ's redemption, you and I become partakers of it. Now this is crucial to understand because this is where I'm taking you. And the Bible is very clear that we have an inheritance in heaven. Everybody shout heaven. And this is where we left off. It's because we have an inheritance in heaven. Heaven is the end game. It is the end game. It is the fullness of what we will inherit. Streets of gold, gates of pearl. I can't get hung up on that because I'll start preaching it again, you know, and it'll take up all my time. But heaven, heaven is the end game. But if you'll put... Um, verse number 14 back up there, I saw something that I hadn't seen before. It says, though, that he gave us an inheritance. We know our inheritance is in, is in heaven. But then he says, but the Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. The first fruits, the pledge, the foretaste, the down payment. Somebody shout down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it. Wait a minute. That means God is saying, even though heaven is your inheritance, that is the end game. That is the full payment. There are things I want you experiencing until you get to heaven. In other words, he was saying there is a portion of your inheritance that is for then and then there is a portion of your inheritance that is for now. The full payment is when you get to heaven. Streets of gold, gates of pearls, the nomos, the, the, the old saints. How many of y'all got them big mamas and grandmamas and mudias, them, them old school saints that say heaven is the place of no more, no more, no more, no more. That's why they sung songs like soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. No more weeping and wailing. No more, no more. Heaven, heaven, heaven to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Heaven, heaven, heaven. That's full payment. But the Bible says until you get the full redemption, you're supposed to be experiencing first fruits, pledges, foretastes, and down payments of it. Which means God says, I want my saints experiencing down payments of heaven before they get there. 
which means we're not just going to heaven, we're going to pull it down into the earth. <laughs> which means there are certain dimensions and manifestations you and I are supposed to be experiencing right now. And it is this part that we're not sure about. There is nobody in this room that if I were to say to you, the moment you die, you are not going to heaven. If I said that, every one of you in here would be like, the devil is a liar. I don't know who Pastor Eric brought up in here, but, but he, the devil is a liar. When I die, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Nobody, nobody would resist the fact that if you died right now, you were on your way to heaven. We are so convinced about that. Sometimes we try to put people in heaven who ain't even going. That's why I used to tell my members now, if you really want me to eulogize somebody, you better make sure they're right. <laughs> it's just a joke, people. Everybody believes that. Everybody is so convinced about the full payment. What we are not convinced about is the down payment. You don't believe in what he promised you right now. And if you're going to have enough faith to die by it, how about you have enough to live by it? <laughs> Trying to set it up, but I feel a pushing anointing up in here. I feel a pushing anointing up in here. Somebody going to get this inheritance. And the Bible tells you how God sent you the first fruits of heaven, the down payment of heaven. And the Bible says the spirit is the down payment, which means what God sent to the believers in the earth realm as a part of of their heavenly inheritance was the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. Now, the reason you ain't shouting <laughs> is because you haven't used the Holy Ghost as an inheritance. But today, I'm about to change your life forever with the Holy Ghost. I got to have the Holy Ghost. He's all that heaven sent to me. I got to have the Holy Ghost. And for those of you that are sitting in this room and like sticking your toe in the water, you ain't been ready to dive all the way in. I came to push you all the way in. Quit playing with the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Don't let nobody downplay it. I got to have the Holy Ghost. I know it ain't popular no more. I know it ain't cool no more. I know people have moved away from it, but the devil is a liar. There was a sound from heaven, my God. He came from heaven to bring heaven down into the earth realm, and he is all that heaven sent me. Be seated, please. Y'all pushing me too hard. Look at somebody say, I gots to have the Holy Ghost. No, some of you didn't say it right. There ain't no anointing on I gotta have. Tell them I gots to have it. I, I gots to have the Holy Ghost. Oh, I gotta have it. I gotta have him. I gotta have him. Which means, oh my God. Which means this is God. This is God out of the counsel of his own will that said what? Can I send to my children to make sure that before they get to heaven, they get a down payment of it down there? And he sent the Holy Ghost, which means the Holy Ghost is not here just to make you feel good and to give you chills and thrills and tingles. The Holy Ghost is here so that you can have heaven on earth. 
Oh, that's why he's here. He's here to bring heaven to me. <laughs> Tell him, bring it to me, Holy Ghost. Bring it to me, Holy Ghost. He came to give me my inheritance. He came to give me everything that Jesus has got for me. Tell him, bring it on, Holy Ghost. Bring it on, Holy Ghost. He is the third person. Be seated, please. Of the Godhead. And he is the inheritance. He's all that God promised. He's all that he promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the old saints. They kept looking for the promise, the promise, the promise. Then he told his disciples, go tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Don't leave that upper room until you get the promise. Don't leave. Don't leave. Why? Because if you leave that room before heaven comes in, all you're going to manifest on earth is what's on earth. But my will is not you manifest on earth what is on earth. My will is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the Holy Ghost came to bring heaven to me. Say heaven is coming down. Come on, you've been singing it. You've been worshiping with it. But you're about to live it. Heaven is coming. He sent the Spirit. And the Spirit is all you get until you get to heaven. <laughs> In other words, the Holy Ghost is the best God can give you in this age. And the Holy Spirit's job is to hold you until heaven. <laughs> I even hear the Holy Ghost saying, preach about the Holy Ghost, son. Preach. <laughs> He's heaven come to me. And he is the minister of inheritance. Can you put something up on the screen real quick? Can you put John 16? You can put it up in just the King James. John 16, verse number 13. And then we're going to go from 13 to 15. And please forgive me for not giving you these scriptures, but they just come into me. John 16, 13 through 15. I, 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 when they get up there, I want to read it with, with you so that you get this. Your life will never be the same after today. Never. John 16, 13. Let me know when you get it up there. And if you got problems with it, I'll just read it. I'll give you a moment since I sprung it on you. John 16, verse number 13. I see it back there. Can you get it up here for me? I might be messing all up the production. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me read it for the sake of time. It says, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Listen to this now. He shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it to you. Oh, my God. That means... The job of the Holy Ghost is to take what belongs to Jesus and minister it to you. I want to say it one more time. He's here to glorify Jesus. And he is to take of what belongs to Jesus and minister it to you. Which means if Jesus got it, the job of the Holy Spirit is to make sure you get it. He's to take of what belongs to Jesus and declare it to you because what belongs to Jesus now belongs to you 
now that you are a joint heir with Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is here to bridge the gap between you and Christ. And he is to bring those things which belong to Christ, which are part of your inheritance and declare it to you. Now we understand why we don't walk in a life that is head scratching to most people. Because what we have done is we have dumbed the Holy Spirit down. And we want him to come down and relate to us where we are. And the Holy Spirit says, that ain't my job. My job ain't to come down and relate to you where you are. My job is to pull you up from where you are up into a dimension that you were created to be. That's why if you're going to hang out with the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to want heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to have to want heaven. Because the Holy Ghost ain't bringing you your culture. He ain't bringing you nothing normal. He ain't bringing you nothing natural. He's bringing heaven's level into your life and if you want it you're going to have to come up you're going to have to come up higher oh everybody just do that some of you going to have to come up you can't hang out with the Holy Ghost and think low you can't hang out with the Holy Ghost and talk low you can't hang out with the Holy you can't do it it's a disconnect he came to pull you up into heaven's standard. And this is why, child of God, if you're going to walk with the Spirit, you're going to have to understand the level you're going to have to walk with. It's going to require faith like you ain't never seen because the Holy Spirit can only bring you heaven's level, heaven's standard. It can only bring you that which pertains to Jesus. This is why when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you're going to have to be able to yield to him. Be seated, please. There are five things that the Holy Spirit has come if you want this inheritance, if you want to walk in the down payment. We're supposed to be living down payments of heaven on earth. Foretaste of heaven on earth. Tasting heaven before I get there. Woo, my God. And if I follow the Holy Ghost, I'll get it. Number one, the Holy Spirit came to minister me. Number one, instruction. Yeah, I like the way you shout now. <laughs> this is why we don't walk in these dimensions is because we ignore his instruction. <laughs> yeah, more than anything, the Holy Spirit is here to talk to you. He's here to guide you into all truth. He's here to speak the things. In other words, when you're hanging out with the Holy Spirit, he came to bring heaven's mind to you, which means you are hanging out with the mind of God. Oh, this is why the Bible talks about let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. You've got to understand the Holy Spirit has the mind of God, and he's here to instruct you. He's here to tell you things to come, guide you into all truth. This is why the Holy Spirit never speaks to you about facts. Wanting to talk about facts, he keeps wanting to talk about truth. This is why don't ignore the Holy Spirit when you feel like God hasn't has, has abandoned you and you feel like God's not there for you because you want the Spirit of God to hand you a piece of tissue and wipe your eyes when you're dealing with your situation. 
but the Holy Spirit's not there to wipe your eyes in dealing with your situation. That's your mama and them. That's your big mama and them. That's your friends. The Holy Ghost is here to say, when you quit crying, I'm ready to give you an instruction to get you out of it. Which means you don't need to be crying. You need to be listening. Because the Holy Ghost is the omniscience of God. There is nothing he doesn't know. There is no knowledge he doesn't have. And if you listen to him, he'll walk you right into heaven on earth. But you gotta listen, you gotta listen. He's heaven's mind. Heaven's, you got heaven's mind. That's your inheritance. You do understand that that's your inheritance. He, he sent heaven's mind to you. You didn't even have to go to school to learn it. You understand? You just got it with the Holy Ghost. And he's here to instruct you. And before you get his power, in which I'm going to talk about in a minute, see, because most of you miss it. When the Holy Spirit does something in your life, he does it through two primary ways. There is demonstration. I'll get to that in a minute. And there's instruction. Most of you are looking for demonstration and you missing the instruction. You don't get to ignore him about what he's telling you to do and then you start pulling on him to show up and do what you're ignoring him about telling you what to do. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't make me preach to you. Because by looking at your life, I can tell you've been ignoring the Holy Ghost. Don't make me do it. I can tell you're ignoring him because I hear the way you talk. I hear the way you complain. I look at your life. I look at your lifestyle. I look at your decisions. I look at your choices. And you ain't got heaven on earth. Most of you live in hell on earth. But after the day, if you listen to the Holy Ghost, Say, I got to have the Holy Ghost. I got to have it. I got to hang out with him. I don't just need him in church. I don't need him when Pastor Eric is preaching and Pastor Kim is preaching and Pastor Blake preaching. I don't just need him on the altar. I need him to walk right out this room with me. I need him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm listening to him in the grocery store. I'm listening to him on the job. I'm listening to him while I'm cooking in the kitchen. I got to have him. I got to be listening to him at all times because he knows everything I need to know <laughs> gotta have the Holy Ghost he is the mind of God to me. which means don't ever be caught again in your life saying you don't know what to do <laughs> because the truth is you might not know what to do but you got one with you that knows everything. <laughs> there ain't a lock the devil got that the Holy Ghost doesn't have a key to open it. Be seated, please. He's there. He's heaven's mind. So he thinks, he thinks, he thinks on heaven's level. See, this is the thing that I had to understand. He doesn't talk to me on my level. He talks to me on his. That's why it don't make sense. Because the Holy Spirit will instruct you to start a business right after you file bankruptcy. <laughs> y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready. The Holy Ghost will have you so far out there that it will have you walking on water. And before you even know what you did, you didn't followed him out into a. Get ready like never before. If you open your mind up to him right now and tell the Holy Spirit, I welcome your instruction. He's going to walk you right into healing, into deliverances. He's going to walk you right into your marriage being whole and restored. He's going to walk you right into your purpose and your destiny. And, but you're going to have to listen. 
Number two, he came to bring wisdom and revelation. Revelation is different than instruction. Instruction is telling you something you need to do or stop doing. Revelation is him pulling the covers off of things and revealing to you truths that your mind could not know. See, this is what I learned when I started preaching the gospel. When I went to school, I used to think I wasn't that intelligent because I was struggling in math I was struggling in all these things. I went to college and I was still struggling. And then I got called to the ministry after it being in college for two years. And it dawned on me when I got called to the ministry that I was absolutely brilliant. I was absolutely brilliant that I, my mind was supernatural and that I had, I had supernatural divine intelligence. And it dawned on me, the reason that I didn't think I was smart is because I was going to school trying to learn what other people thought I should know in order to fulfill an assignment I wasn't even called to. Which means, which means I struggled with algebra. I struggled with geometry. I struggled with trigonometry. But I didn't struggle with Deuteronomy. <laughs> Be because when I opened this book, it started talking back to me and showing me things that I didn't go to school to learn. I don't have a problem with education, but you can get more by revelation than you ever will by education because the Spirit of God is intelligent. I'm talking about a higher level here. There's some of you, you sitting up here and you're, you're dyslexic, you're ADD, and you claimed all of those things uh, as to let you know you're not smart and not intelligent. Some of you dropped out and some of you don't even have a GED. But if you got a GOD, you got everything. Quit limiting your life to what people have for you. You got the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will tell you things and reveal to you things that the natural mind can't know. I'm talking about heaven's mind here. <laughs> Lay your hands on your head and say, talk to me, Holy Ghost, talk to me. Talk to me. That's all you need is a revelation. That's all you need is a revelation. Woo! I feel the anointing in this place. I release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in this house. Things that you didn't know, you're going to start knowing. Things that you couldn't see, you're going to start seeing. Some of you are about to get word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Gifts of the spirit are about to start functioning in your life. That's your inheritance. Be seated, please. I got to finish this. Touch your neighbor on the way down and say, yeah, I know it. <laughs> I know what? I know what needs to be known. Everything that needs to be known, I know it. Revelation. He just takes the cover off of things. See, single people in here, you can't be picking your mates. Let me quit. No, no, I don't even want to touch that. I don't want to, I don't want to touch that. He came to bring me my inheritance of the mind of God. Number three, he came to give me power. Everybody shout power. You, you, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. The Holy Spirit has come to bring you heaven's power. Which means he is here to take of what belongs to Jesus and declare it to you. This power is where he manifests healing, deliverance, where he manifests his glory. He is here to bring it to you. And I'm not just talking about in church. I'm talking about all the time. With everything. Power. Power.
power. Power. Because at some point, you're never going to be able to get to an altar to get everything you need. You're not going to be able to get to the elders and Pastor Eric and all of them. But you got some with you where you can lay hands on your... Uh-uh, it ain't going to happen. I can't let you sit on that. I can't let you sit on that. You can't have the Holy Ghost and be needy. The only person you need, you got him with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you keep looking in other people what you got on the inside of your own self. And he'll give me power. He'll give me power for healing, for deliverance, over demons, over devils. Power, gifts of the spirit, signs, wonders, miracles, power. Power, supernatural ability, dunamis, dynamite, dynamic working, which means every child of God is a stick of dynamite. But if you only function in the natural, you'll never detonate. You got to get into a dimension where you trust him for his power. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Not because of your hands, but because of his power. Which means you are not the water, you're just the hose it's running through. But these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you shall cast out devils. And I'm trying to tell you it's a way with this old wine skin where we run around looking for a healing evangelist somewhere that we can go get in a tent or in a coliseum. Thank God for that. It worked. I went. I went to Benny Hinn Crusades. I went to Tent Crusades. But thank God when you get this revelation, you you ain't got to go chasing no power. You got it on the inside. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on it. God, I feel the anointing up in here. Somebody shout power. It's getting ready to detonate in you. You're about to become supernatural, extraordinary. You're about to walk in an anointing that's been there all the time, but it's about to come out. It's in you. It's in you. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to sustain from sin. Power to break habits. Power to curse addictions. Power to break bloodline curses. Power to be delivered. Power to be free. Power to be anointed. Power. 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 Lay your hands on somebody and shout power. It's coming back to the church. It's coming back to the church. We've been cute too long. We've been too buttoned up. But it's time to get back to an old-fashioned Holy Ghost anointing. Touch your neighbor and say, it's in you. 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 Let that power yield to the Holy Ghost. He'll deliver you. He'll heal you. He'll set you free. Woo! Heaven is coming down. You're not just gonna have it, you gonna start releasing it. Where? You gonna release it in the grocery store. You gonna release it in the schoolhouse. You gonna release I got to have power. My God, somebody shout up in this house. I feel power from on high.
Matter of fact, if you want a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost, get on down here right now. We about to release this power. I got other points, but I got to go. Power. Come get ready to be healed. Come get ready to be set free. It's heaven's inheritance. Power. Power. Hey, Blake, can y'all come with me? Y'all come with me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Power. Power. Wonder working power. Power. Deliverance power. Power. Out of your belly. Shall flow rivers. I know. Of living water. Power. In the name of Jesus. Power. For mind regulation. Power. Oh. Power. Power in the name. I command healing. In the name of Jesus, I command deliverance in the oh, power. We receive it. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Got to have power. Deliverance in your mind. Power in Jesus' name. Power to become the man of God he called you to be. Oh, oh, give me some of these young people. This is for your children and your children's children. For this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. Your sons, I know, your daughters shall prophesy. Power to prophesy. Power to reach your generation. Power to break yokes. Power. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's heaven's gift to you. Praying in the Holy Ghost is heaven's gift to you. Praying in the Spirit is heaven's gift to you. Come on, there are those of you in this room, you've been kind of shunning away from the things of the Holy Spirit. Today, you realize this heaven's gift to you. You're about to be baptized afresh in the Holy Ghost and this time yield to it. I want everybody in this room to start worshiping in the Spirit right now. Come on, yield to it. It's your inheritance. It's your inheritance to speak in a heavenly language. It's your inheritance to pray the mysteries of God. It's your inheritance. Hey, I'm on. Yamamamane, be filled, be filled. It's the promise, be filled. It's the promise, be filled. It's your promise, be filled. Devil, you're not taking it. You're not taking our inheritance. We've been called a walk in power. Woo! Now stay, stay right there.
prepare because this is the next dimension. Everybody can't get to this altar and I can't get to everybody. This is why the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It's not just in me, it's in all of us. And I need you right now to just take your hand and put it on somebody's shoulder and tell them, say, receive. In the name of Jesus, healing, deliverance, victory, peace, joy, whatever you need, get it right now. The Holy Ghost is going to use us to minister to one another. I release the anointing. Let it spread. Do it in the balcony. Do it in the balcony. Walk over to somebody and touch them. Signs, wonders, miracles are happening right now. You will never be the same again. There, whew, there is a generation and when the Lord gave me this word, he knew he knew I would be here to minister it to you. When he gave me this word for this season, he knew I was coming to City Gate, which means heaven has had its eyes on you. And Jesus is saying, I need somebody a generation 
to walk in this down payment. I sent heaven to you. And if you'll believe me, I'll minister inheritance to you. You don't have to beg him for it. All you have to be is in Christ Jesus. And it's ours. And this is why I started off talking about instruction because, because sometimes God delivers by instruction. Sometimes you come to an altar and you'd be like, I went back to the doctor and he said, I still got it. Don't get discouraged. Maybe he didn't want to heal you by demonstration. He wanted to heal you by instruction and revelation. Some of you, he's going to supernaturally tell you to stop doing one thing or start doing one thing and it's going to reverse everything in your body. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. It's heaven's mind. And if you'll follow him, he will lead you into the inheritance of Christ. Saints of God, hear me. It's God's will for you to have heaven's best in the earth. Don't ever let anybody talk you out of it. You're not a victim. You're none of that. Don't get caught up with everybody else talking like that. That doesn't apply to you. I'm, you know I'm African American. I think you can tell. <laughs> I love my culture. I love my race. God had saw fit for me to be born in a brown earth suit. But I can't get with people when they start talking about I'm oppressed or I'm victimized or I'm disenfranchised. There's a place for justice and equality and social justice, trust me. But, but how you gonna curse what God has blessed? How? 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 <laughs> we, there's a place to empower, but you can't fall prey to none of that. Because if God be for you, you got an inheritance. I live by inheritance. Somebody asked me because they heard me say, I heard you preach that, that you already got your reparations. I say, yeah, I did. I preached that. They say, when did you get it? I say, I got it in 19, I got it in 1988. I said, when you get it in 1988? I say, that's the year I got saved. They say, how did you get it? I say, I got it from another government. I say, why everybody waiting on this one, there's another one. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. My point, and that can apply to Caucasian people or Latin people. My, my thing is to get you to understand you're now God's inheritance. Think like it. Talk like it. Believe like it. And start claiming your inheritance. How do you do it? By faith. And trust the Holy Ghost to walk you into it. Because that's his assignment. He's the minister of inheritance. So on your way back to your seat, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, get everything. Get everything. Get everything. Get it all. Don't waste nothing. <laughs>